KSBY News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. You are watching KSBY News at 5. I'm Claudia Busio. We begin with the latest in Isla Vista, where an investigation is underway after authorities say two people were stabbed overnight. Paso Robles police confirmed that the suspect involved in today's shooting and stabbing is now in custody. With rain in the forecast, residents are not only worried about trash and debris at Moore Creek, but more so the big concern is this pile of sediment. Este otoño celebramos el mes de la herencia hispana. Una oportunidad para reconocer las contribuciones históricas y culturales. We are getting ready for a beautiful sunset here on the Central Coast. Let's take you out live to Pismo Beach. You can see people enjoying the day. Beautiful skies. Jackpot soars to an estimated 1.25 billion after no one beat the odds in last night's drawing. ¿Qué mensaje tienes para ellos? A lot of our viewers are immigrants. They might be able to relate to you for the first time seeing someone of color in office. Desde este punto es posible ver la magnitud de la destrucción del Incendio Valley. Local airports are preparing for the influx of travelers expected this holiday weekend. Okay, so we're going to try this. Sorry, I have to. Huh. Mm. Really good. An ice cream on a hot day. I'm sorry, Richard, but I'm going to have to send things back to you because I need to devour this funnel cake. We begin with an update on the cleanup efforts related to PFAS pollution coming from the San Luis Obispo County Regional Airport. Lo que empezó como un asalto terminó con un sujeto atrincherado dentro de esta sucursal de Subway. Here is a time lapse of our radar showing those spotty green areas, mostly in Northern California. I am wearing a pink I, dress. I think uh, everybody has way too much Barbie stuff going on. No, there's never too much. <laughs> Maybe you need like a Ken shirt. Sure. Fast forward to today. Most of the state is ranging from no drought to moderate drought. This is all thanks to Mujeres Acción, a local group that wants to keep these traditions alive. And joining me now is Emmalyn. She is one of those volunteers. She looks beautiful, by the way. I'll be the grand on this one. Not a big fan. Me neither. We have some around the newsroom. They have, oh, they'll eating. stay there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here on KSBY News. That's it. As part of our Hispanic Heritage Month coverage, we take you to Santa Maria. Rico Rivera is an artist who is paving the way to tackle complicated issues through art. KSV1 News anchor Claudia Busio has his story. Drawing on his own story as a migrant and transgender artist, he is creating an inclusive space one brushstroke at a time. Art gave Rico Rivera an avenue to find his voice. I could just be myself there. I could just dig in, like, dig, dig deep in, just kind of find myself. Most importantly, a blank canvas gave Rico the courage to embrace his true self. Rico is my, my, my artistic name, but Yuriko, Yuriko Carida Rivera Vera is my full name, and I cherish it because it's the first thing my parents ever gave me. It's the person that brought me who I am today. Three years ago, Rico began his transition, breaking many barriers along the way. First generation in the United States from a really strong Mexican household, going against the grain in every aspect, you know, coming out, you know, queer when I was, you know, in high school, and then, you know, coming out again as trans. A self-portrait now rings differently. I found this again, and I saw it in completely different light because Instead of seeing myself falling apart, I saw myself building myself back up. Rico keeps his roots close to his heart. I miss Mexico, but because I grew up here, this is home. Through his tattoo work and his paintings, often shining a light on Mexican icons such as movie stars Pedro Infante and La India Maria. In April this year, Rico painted this mural in Santa Maria commissioned by future leaders of America. Those labor jobs are the ones that unite us. You know, so we have to stick together. Specific elements are highlighted in the mural. Students tossing their caps to the sky. You know, education is something that they can't take from you. A monarch butterfly to symbolize immigration. Strawberry fields. Oh, you can't really tell if it's a sunrise or a sunset. And that's exactly how it is for our people. They're out there from the sunrise to the sunset. And a shout out to DACA recipients or dreamers. I want to really make that inner child proud and really say, you know, this is what you wanted to do and you have to work hard. His message to the community, know that you are not alone. Timing is everything, you know, and you have to really go through a storm to really appreciate the sunshine. Rico is hoping to eventually open his own tattoo shop and art gallery to keep showcasing his pieces. In the studio, Claudia Busio, KSPY News. 
An investigation is underway at wells along Buckley Road after high levels of PFAS were found in groundwater near the San Luis Obispo County Airport. Now a voluntary cleanup agreement has been ratified. Here's what the county will be doing moving forward and what it means for residents who live in the polluted area. Many of us have had this water to drink for more than 40 years of our lives with these contaminants. Michael Rivera owns commercial property near Buckley Road. Now the well right here where the water comes up comes to these pressure tanks and that provides water pressure in the home and around for irrigation. Kathy Borland has lived right across the airport for about 40 years. She raised her seven kids on Buckley Road. We ate our, our meat from our animals and we drank goat's milk. <laughs> so. You know, again, we have no idea how long this contamination has been going on. PFAS were found in groundwater near the San Luis Obispo airports in 2022. PFAS are a class of chemicals that are used because of their heat resistance and resist to water and grease uh, as typically a coating on products like food packaging or carpet. In this case, it comes from AFFF, which is a firefighting foam required by the FAA to quickly contain aircraft related fires. Once they're in the environment, like in the groundwater we see around the airport, they'll never break down on their own. 57 out of 74 wells sampled by the county resulted with an above response level established by the state's division of drinking water. That would be the purple, red and orange dots on this map. And they advise above a response level that a water supply either have treatment applied or that be taken out of service. What are the health concerns associated with PFAS? They are known to cause cancer and to have other toxicity effects to people like in uh, reproductive and development stages. Borland can't help thinking a health problem she had might be related. Ten years ago I did have a major liver issue and the doctors can never quite figure out what that was about. So how did these contaminants make their way from the airport to the properties along Buckley Road? Residents believe this culvert that runs through Kathy Borland's property might be the answer. Fire foam testing in past years was often done by spraying PFAS uh, laden foam onto the ground directly across the street from some of those homes. On July 21st, a three-year agreement was ratified during a Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board meeting. The voluntary cleanup agreement really speaks to our collaborative effort between the county of San Luis Obispo and CAL FIRE and our willingness to step forward and really try and help clean up the airport-related PFAS issues um, for the surrounding community. Within 30 days from ratification, the airport parties will offer point-of-views drinking water PFAS treatment. Most residents already have that. We have the carbon filter that goes into the house right now. So all of our house water is filtered. All of the irrigation, all of this out here you see is not filtered. So what we're doing is continuing to pollute the ground. Within one year, treatment will expand to point of entry systems. Cal Fire has also taken steps to prevent further pollution. We don't flow it anymore for training. We don't flow it for testing. We only flow it for actual emergencies or fires uh, that would require the use of the AFFF. If an emergency requires the use of the foam, we would try to mitigate um, the spread of the foam as fast as possible, and then we would safely dispose of it. Residents still have concerns. Reimbursement was an issue we brought up. If we go ahead and do this and not wait for you, are we going to get reimbursed? We don't know that yet and we want community involvement. A total estimate for this project is still in the works, but according to county airport officials, the investigation so far has cost around $2 million. We will continue to test, we'll continue to monitor, and continue to report back to residents what's happening. We do hope there will be great, urgent follow-through on to get this problem fixed for now. There's still a lot more work to do. Chief Owen says the FAA and Department of Defense are working together to find a non-PFAS foam to respond to fire incidents at airports across the country.